Hey, 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 hey! Welcome to Creative Block. We're your hosts, Gene. And V. We interview people in the animation industry about their life, work, hobbies, while we doodle jam. We asked people on Twitter if they had specific topics they wanted us to discuss, as well as some drawing prompts. And today with us, we have KK Flip Notes, also known as Kevin Gemin. Hi! Yay! <laughs> Hello! Hi, KK. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much. Welcome. <laughs> I'm glad uh, I'm honored to be there with you. So thank you very much to invite me. That's really great. You're you're officially a blockhead now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's what yeah. that's what everyone that goes in the show becomes a blockhead. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking I could read some of those questions that are kind of episode related. So that's kind of going to get us in this groove. Yeah, we got a lot of good questions from Twitter. So mm -hmm. thank you to everyone. We have from at Irrelevant T, what motivated you to get into animation? Yeah. From at Mystery Who, I think I remember KK saying he self-taught before. How did he go about learning new things in animation art in general? Did yeah. he actively seek new things to practice, to, to stick to what he enjoyed and learned over time or something else? A question for everyone, really. Yeah. And from at Momo, Ho Skin to KK, are you self-taught? Are there inspirations or influences you think were critical in your development until now? What is different in animating pigeons compared to before you were famous? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of love from a fellow. I love this. That's a good question. <laughs> From at Nipu underscore Sue underscore underscore underscore. KK, what was your inspiration? Why did you start animating? And why are you so awesome? <laughs> <laughs> and from at cold under, underscore Kitsune, did you have an interest in animation before finding flip note had to know? All right, nice. So yeah, go off. Talk about uh, kind of how you started. Yeah, so I just check the questions again. So the first one was a uh, high relevant tier. And you can also just kind of go from like a chronological point of view because all of these are kind of like, yeah. Hey, yeah, they're all related. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. how did you get interested in animation? So like, as a, like, yeah. when was kind of like the first time as like a kid where you were like, wow, drawing is awesome or like, or even animating. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so everything began like I was really was uh, like maybe three, four years old. So I was really young, mm -hmm. and I just <laughs> sorry, I just tried to see if I, ah yes okay. It was just uh, when I drew. So um, yes, I was pretty young, and uh, I was like yeah, um, it seems cool to draw, but uh, I don't know how people does that. So. You know, when you're a kid, you read books, you see some cartoons on TV. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you wonder, like, uh, could I do this one day or not? And uh, I think really what made me realize I loved it, it's when uh, you have, like, a class, little class when you're a kid, when you have to draw. Mm -hmm. And um, those class really made me realize I love to draw. Like, mm -hmm. to say, like uh, I really had fun to draw. And uh, I was never tired to 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 draw something with uh, in class or even outside of class at home, like uh, when I have my pens and all. And um, that's really all I discovered that uh, I really loved it. And then I had uh, when I was like maybe five, I had the, the Game Boy, so mm -hmm. my first Nintendo Game Boy. Uh, a red one mm -hmm. and uh, my first game was Kirby. was it the color yeah. <laughs> and my first color one my first game ever was kirby so kirby's dream nice one. and uh, <clears throat> i just really loved this game even it's quite kind of short you know it was really pleasant like i loved the music i loved the kirby the hero it was just a ball swallowing enemies yep. spitting them out uh, flying and all and I was like, wow, that's funny. Like, uh, you can eat enemies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's different from Mario. Like, you just have to jump over them and take friends. And uh, I, I really loved this game. But at the time, without internet, you, you never really know how uh, popular a game is. So when I was talking about uh, this game with friends, many were like, I never heard of this before. 
So <laughs> really, <laughs> like maybe Kirby is not that so. Yeah, yeah, Kirby. Many friends of mine were like, uh, "What the hell is Kirby?" Yeah, like, you don't know. It's like a ball that fly, uh, <laughs> it swallows stuff. Like, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, around like ninety ninety nine, when uh, Super Smash Bros. on the Nintendo sixty four came out, uh, you had Kirby as a character. And it's when uh, many of my friends were like, oh, isn't it the guy you were talking about? Like, uh, <laughs> Finally, they caught on. <laughs> your game, like, uh, but he's not white, he's pink. I was like, ah, oh, yeah, that's crazy. Normally he's white. But uh, since in France, <laughs> at the time, I didn't have much knowledge about games. I didn't know that right. tons of the Kirby games came in. And uh, that's all, like, I was like, wow, so cool. I need to draw him again. Mm -hmm. Because I kind of stopped to draw much when I was a kid because, like, uh, I had uh, many other stuff in mind, and uh, maybe I, I never, I didn't have much memories about what I was really drawing much. But I know that I never really stopped. But for some years, maybe I drew like once or twice a month. So really, I kind of stop it. Yeah. To draw, mm -hmm. and it's really around 2003 that I came back to. Man, that's a long, that's a long gap. Yeah. 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 Because uh, it was uh, because of uh, art class in college. Oh, so was it college or are you talking about high school? How old were you at this moment? Ah, um, it was a college. I don't know how to say it. college? Because it's the same uh, word. Well, the college. Right, so it's high school. <laughs> it's high school, okay. <laughs> high school, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no worries. So yeah, it was high school. And <laughs> I was like, yeah, um, I should draw again. I had fun when I was a kid. And um, I began to uh, draw again, and it was mostly traditional because I never had like a, a, how to say a, a PC or um, like a tablet or stuff, so I could not make digital art. Mm. Right. And I seen it online uh, on the internet and stuff, and I was like, "Wow, that's cool!" But all people does that. I would like to try. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I seen the price of tablet, I was like, "Oh no!" Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's too expensive, so no. And my parents were like, you know, if you want to draw, uh, take a paper and a pen and draw. I was like, okay. <laughs> Such a parent and, uh, thing to so... say. <laughs> you got paper right here. So I was like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, man. Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> I will do this. And then for many years, uh, <laughs> I did like this. And um, about uh, 2007 or eight. I discovered DeviantArt. Oh, yeah. So the community with artists. So I was like, oh, nice. Maybe I should make uh, an account there. And uh, I made one, but I still didn't make um, a digital art. So when I seen many people making uh, stuff and uh, sharing, I was like, wow, I would like to do this. But uh, how do they do this? Mm. It's like so awesome. And I just shared uh, what I did was just uh, sharing like uh, I had to scan my art on uh, with my scanner mm -hmm. and uh, then share on internet. But it was like uh, sometimes it was not really well uh, put in the machine. So they, sometimes it was uh, I don't have a word in English. Uh, un peu de travers. Oh, it was cute. <laughs> yeah, it was always kind of like wonky because you couldn't scan it straight. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, right, but, right. That's it. So it was not pro at all, but I was like, oh, who cares? <laughs> mm -hmm. So I shared like this. And uh, yeah, I really lo love to do that. And also uh, for the animation part, because uh, I love to animate, it was uh, on my books um, at school. Oh, yeah? You know, uh, sometimes when you have uh, books like uh, math mathematics books, language books, and yeah, all, yeah. at the bottom corner of those books, sometimes I draw balls many balls from the page oh, yeah? and then i i made it act like a flip book oh wow so i draw uh, yes and i did this uh, <laughs> often on my books like uh, <laughs> just to feel it animated because sometimes uh, one day um, i seen a flip book and i i found the idea really funny like uh, you can make something animated without doing it on screen so i found it really funny that's awesome but then after that i never really had uh, the chance to animate so for example, the flipbook things, I did this when I was like maybe eight and then uh, never again. And always in my mind, I was like, I would like to try this again, but on an application, but I don't know what uh, to do uh, or what application allow you this. 
So I never had the uh, opportunity to do it. You were so young when you yeah, like first yeah, yeah. when you yeah. first animated. You were eight. That's mm -hmm. like really amazing. That's I think. That's super young. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's really great. So yeah, that's how it began. And then the big biggest thing of my life happened in 2009. <laughs> Flip Nut Studio came in. <laughs> so I didn't take it when it really came in uh, because it came around. Um, I think it was 15th October, uh, um, August uh, 2009, and I discovered it um, the 4th September. So it was maybe two, two weeks after launch because I was on vacations for, for uh, August, so I didn't have internet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I came back just before uh, beginning school, starting school, I guess I will do the dogs again. <laughs> <laughs> it was just so, okay. so yeah, I, I discovered this and I was like, oh, flip notes, like, mm, all right, what is this? So I tried, I seen the logo with a little orange frog, so I found it cute. So I was like, okay, let's try it out. Yeah, I was like, uh, what is this? <laughs> because I don't understand. And when I first began it, I seen that uh, they say, uh, share your work, your animations, like uh, a bit, it was like YouTube, but for for um, the DSi on Nintendo DS. So I was like, that's so awesome. That's crazy. Because mm -hmm. basically it allowed you to to make, it allowed you both to do animation, but also to share it with the community. Yeah, that's it. Mm. So that was really crazy at the time. Like uh, I was like, whoa. But, uh, and then I really wondered like, but can I animate? Like, oh. So I tried, and uh, in the past, I used PictoChat, so I don't know oh, yeah. if you had a Nintendo. Yeah, so to make little small animations, <laughs> I used PictoChat, but wow. it's totally not, uh, <laughs> it's totally not, yes, it's not made to animate at all, so. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think it was. I was like, I don't remember there being any animation features in that, but that's awesome. <laughs> no, yeah. You just had to write something, set, put set message, so it went to the upper screen, yeah. and then you could just oh. scroll. So <laughs> you imagine like it's animated, but it was totally not animated. Wow, but dude, that... <laughs> it was like a, it was like scrolling on Tumblr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's such a <laughs> that's such a clever use of, of those tools. That's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> so I did both. So when I discovered Flipnote and I seen that the wall screen you can you could draw on the wall screen, I was like, oh, that's like 300 times better than than PictoChat. So yes, let's go on. <laughs> let's go again. I need to draw. And since it was my first experience drawing on uh, digital, I was like, uh, I have nothing to lose. So let's go, let's go. And I tried to animate a little thing. So it was just uh, a little curvy. Mm. And uh, I just loved it. And then I shared online and uh, I was like, whoa, that, that's crazy. That's cool. That's fun. But when I went to school, so <laughs> I forgot about it a bit. And then when I came back, I, I discovered uh, the online uh, the, the online feature to check all the um, other animations. And that's where I met some artists that I loved. I still love their rock right now. The one was called MDM Bunny. Mm -hmm. And he made little loops with music he composed himself his band and i was like but you can make things like those on on the nintendo ds like what because it was like a ultra professional and uh, i was just amazed and uh, the later when you make uh, an account you can go online because uh, when you make an account you have free uh, zones and um, since i was in france mine was europe and uh, australia mm. but you also had america and japan mm. but uh, when I was connected to my 3DS, uh, my Nintendo DS uh, back then, I could not see Japanese flip nut on uh, my DS because uh, it was different regions. Mm. So I could only check the um, European one and Australian one. And if I wanted to check the others, I had to go to the PC. Mm. And then, uh, so I checked on the PC. And when I see things, I was like, oh. I want to do this like uh, because so many artists were ultra talented and uh, some made things. You you asked it, you wondered if they did this with their hands because it was like no, not possible. It was too too well done to be done on a 3DS mm. <laughs> on a Nintendo DS in the time. But it really inspired me so much. I was like, uh, yeah, 
uh, that's it. I want to do it. I want to do it. And since this day, uh, I draw like every day on the Nintendo DS. Yeah. Like, uh, I just loved it so much. I could not stop. I was, I brought my Nintendo DS uh, at school. I draw be uh, between poses, between classes, and all my friends asked me, but what are you doing? I was like, I'm animating on the Nintendo DS. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that's crazy. So other friends joined. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I made a little uh, group or like a little uh, family of people, uh, yeah. friends with uh, like <laughs> the Nintendo DS. Did you have friends at school that also animated on the DS? Yeah. I made many friends uh, at school, or even like uh, I met friends, online French uh, people mm. that also discovered Nintendo, uh, the Nintendo DS, because back then when you had like, uh, I don't know, f uh, Facebook groups and all, mm. people made some groups to join and uh, many people could uh, interact with each other. Mm. So that's really how it began. And for me, it was really like uh, opening a new door for uh, I really loved to draw, but when I discovered that I could do all of this with my uh, the 3DS, it's really uh, of the DS back because now I use the 3DS, but before it was just the DSi, so the yeah. previous uh, version. Mm. Does Flipnote still work on the 3DS? Yes. Mm, okay. Oh, I mean uh, the new one, yes, but the old one, uh, you need uh, the old one, but you can just make Flipnote, but you no longer can. Uh... Oh, yes, you can now. I mean, the website, the official website um, is closed, but someone made a kind of the same website as before, but it's like a mod. Oh, okay. So you can still share your work, but it's not like the official website. Right, right, right. It's like it. So there's still a little that's community cool. that, that's, uh, yeah. that's obsessed with Flipnote. That's great. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's it. That's uh, all I discovered animation. Uh -huh. So I had no no edge at all before I... It's replete to another question that was like, uh, if I am self-taught, so yes, I am self-taught. Mm -hmm. I, I never had animation class. Uh, I never had like, uh, <laughs> never had uh, like courses for animation. I really discovered all by myself. Like every day, I was just experimenting when with something with an idea. That's great. And uh, yeah, that's really like uh, when you. I don't know, one day I wanted to animate a ball bouncing, another day I wanted to animate like a, a leaf falling from a tree. Mm -hmm. uh, you no, know, you observe like, what is happening online, uh, online, on, in real life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, you just want to copy and try to represent it yourself. And uh, this way, when you really like what you do, like uh, experimenting, uh, the more you do it, the more skills comes to you. Sure. Do you think that, like, having access to the... Like, I assume you were always carrying this DS around with you. Do you think that it helped you to get good at animation because you always had this animation tool with you everywhere you went? Like, you didn't have to wait to get to a computer. You could just try something out anytime you were, like, out and about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I, um, it was uh, really easier for me to always have it with me because, like... Uh, it pushed me to try practicing every day, you know, because right. uh, with my PC, I didn't have my PC always with yeah, me. Yeah. And uh, I didn't have always the time to draw or uh, concentrate on this. And uh, also uh, back then uh, with studies and stuff, I was like, uh, I can't really take all of my time just drawing. <laughs> I need to do the, like... Uh, the graduation and stuff. So yeah, sure. <laughs> I had to pause. But with the 3DS, it was easy because like it's small. You you can draw anytime you want and uh, you can pause, close the screen and stuff. Yeah. So uh, it was just amazing. And uh, it really gave me the need to keep going like this. And uh, also since it was, um, how to say, it was digital. Mm. It was less frustrating than uh, uh, traditional for me uh, in terms of the pens and uh, the material. Because like when I used a lot of my pens for traditional, I was I were using them a lot, so I had to buy many times. Yeah, it costs a lot and stuff. Yeah, while uh, digital, you just do anytime you want to draw, like uh, because it's digital, so your pens will never be used 
in a way, you know, and uh, when I draw on uh, 3DS, I was um, DSi, mm -hmm. I was like, uh, yes, I can make um, tons of, and tons of animations. Um, my pen will never use because it's not real ink. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, in the end, I still used the. Uh, I still use many stylus, in fact, because I was drawing so much yeah. that the, <laughs> the pen, uh, the thing went off. Oh, like, no. Uh, I felt destroyed like uh, three or four stylus. That's so funny. That's funny. You destroyed your stylus. Yeah. I was going to ask you, did you end up <laughs> animating more than playing games on the on the 3DS and GSI? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, literally. Like, Sounds like uh, it, yeah. For real, like uh, before I, uh, but just to give you an idea, uh, for example, before Flipknot, I think I was mostly playing like uh, what Mario Kart or stuff like this. And when I discovered Flipknot, like my uh, session of Pokemon, uh, I didn't play the game in months, sometimes years. And I was like, wow, I should play. And the game ruins you. I should probably play these games. Uh, <laughs> how many? Yeah, and the games is like uh, last time you played, it was like maybe 2010, you know, and uh, I'm still, uh, and uh, we are like 2012. So I was like, it's been two years already. What? No, that's not possible. And uh, but back uh, at the time, you didn't have uh, the time to play a game on the Nintendo DS. You know, you they didn't record the. Um, the hours you play, mm. but you could see the hours like on Pokemon or RPG games. Yes, yeah. Generally, they put uh, they tell you how many hours you have. But Flipknot, I didn't have any uh, any uh, informations on uh. this. But I guess that normally, if I don't say too approximate, I think I spend around like more than. 10,000 hours. Oh my God. Uh, if not on the Nintendo DS. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. It sounds like you were using it all the time. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, somebody actually asked at oh. Space Dusty, asked, what's your favorite Nintendo game to play? And I think we can yeah. just ask in general. It doesn't yeah. have to be Nintendo either. Yeah. Oh, I'm not too difficult in terms of Nintendo games, mm -hmm. but um, I have to admit that I really loved games like. Uh, Kirby, sure, yeah, <laughs> but um, also I love to play Animal Crossing mm -hmm. because uh, it's, 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 it's just the fact that it's like real time and I like to inter interact with things that happen like real time and all like building friends, mm. planting trees and see them growing up, uh, seeing the time passing by with the, the sun rising and uh, the sun setting yeah, it's very relaxing. and stuff. And uh, I don't know why I really loved this kind of game, but I also like Mario Kart, uh, what Pokemon too. But when I see people playing online, I wonder if I play Pokemon good. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> because yeah. uh, it's like uh, when I play Pokemon, it's just like I catch some, uh, I make them grow and stuff. And I beat Elite Four and I'm like, yeah, cool. Uh, I'm good at Pokemon. But when I see people playing online, like uh, the, the competitions and stuff. I'm like, wow, well, uh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a that's a whole different level. I don't play Pokemon like this at all. Yeah. I have like the tutorial. I don't know if I play good because... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> do, you think, do you think you're a little bit competitive, but like you like comparing your art to other people's art or like the, your Pokemon skills to other Pokemon skills? <laughs> or... <laughs> I have to admit... Uh, it depends on the game. Generally, I'm a bit competitive when I, I can master a game. Like, for example, Mario Kart. Mm -hmm. I know I was ultra competitive yeah. on the Wii, the Wii version because you had the online. And I had, like, uh, I think the maximum of points. I wow. think it was 999. Holy <laughs> shit. And, uh, but uh, when you lose, you lose some points. But when you win, you gain some. And I, I was really, really good at game. And I, I spent really nights. Nice <laughs> playing online and also Super Smash Brothers, I loved it because uh, like, uh, yeah, fighting games generally, I like to see people play, but for Super Smash Brothers, I was like, no, no, I uh, this game have Kirby. Ah. I have to main Kirby. I have to represent. Yeah, fellow Kirby. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I, th I pretty much only use Kirby. I, I love Kirby, but uh, even when people said uh, he's not the main, or like he's not a uh, top tier. Oh, whatever. Or, uh, Who cares? <laughs> the tier things online. I was like, no, I love Kirby. Yeah, Kirby's great. But uh, yeah, this is the kind of game I, I love. Yeah. I love rhythm games also. 
I was I was wondering, so you were animating in high school uh, on the DS between classes, yes. trying to find time. Uh, after you graduated from high school, yeah. what what was your path forward in with animating art? And like, what was what did you do after high school? So when I finished high school, I had uh, like it was what? Uh, yeah, just before uh, just before uh, summer. So I was like, so now uh, what should I do? <laughs> <laughs> and um, I went to see school because you have like, a, oh, I don't have the word in English. Uh, c'est les concours. C'est um, pas the... Non, c'est les concours pour entrer à les, dans les écoles. And entrance exams, the entrance exams. Yeah, entrance exams to go to school, art school because I was like, if I don't go to an art school, I don't really know if I can work. <laughs> in the industry you know because i need maybe a graduation or something so i was like <sighs> i will do it yeah but uh it was not that i don't like uh to go it because i love art and all but it's just the prices like for real but i think i mean everybody knows that art school costs you one or two arms yes. or one leg something. <laughs> like it's pretty expensive and yeah. i was like for real i really have to spend like uh, 10,100 Yeah, so it was just to say, yeah, I'm an artist. <laughs> <laughs> or me, or me and my friends, we are laughing, but at the same time, it was so true. I was like, yes, KK, you have to do this. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> so I checked online uh, <laughs> for schools. And uh, when I see the place, I was like, oh, I need to uh, to work. <laughs> yeah. I need to do something. But when um, I seen that uh, you have... Uh, help for the students who go to schools like uh, mm. in french we call this uh, la bourse uh, uh, gra- uh, like a scholarship mm-hmm. yeah and so um, it was like what june july and normally when you uh, ask a school to try to come to it uh, do the contest mm-hmm. it's around march mm. february so i was like uh, tons of months late <laughs> so oh, i came no. like a little floor hey Uh, I just finished school. Uh, can I draw? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, I went to uh, first one I went to was uh, Poitiers, one uh, a school, uh, art school in Poitiers. Mm-hmm. But uh, I was too late, so they just say no, sorry, too late. Oh. I was like, oh, okay, fine, fine. And then uh, I discovered um, Emil Cole, so the school in L- Lyon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then uh, when I told them, like, uh, yeah, I want to join the school like I just graduated and uh, your school interests me because I'm in terms of illustration and all because I still since I never went to an art school or stuff uh, I could draw and animate really well but uh, in terms of having my style or my own interpretation of things mm. I was totally nowhere mm. so I could make fan arts really good. Uh, I could animate stuff really well. Mm. But when it comes to my heart, like uh, really people, oh, someone can recognize me. They just recognize me because I draw on the 3DS mm. or uh, on Flipnut. But that's all. So I was like, maybe I need to take class. Right. But uh, that was not uh, how to say. I didn't do it because like I really need it. But uh, just because I was like, uh, we only live once. So maybe sure. I can try. and. Mm. I do one year, and if I don't like it, I quit. Mm-hmm. So I save money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Or if I love it, I continue and I lose money. <laughs> that's also a choice. Yeah. And uh, that's how I went there. And thanks God, uh, I was lucky enough to be able to go to the the school. Mm-hmm. So it was a prepa preparations year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I could go there, and uh, it's all again my uh, my uh, studies in art. But I still draw a lot on my 3DS, and uh, many teachers didn't like sometimes. Yeah, what would they <laughs> say? They draw on my DS because uh, they thought that I was just playing. Yeah, yeah, sure. But many, many. I think the first, uh, the first teacher that seen me drawing on my 3DS, on my DSi, was like, uh, put this down or put this on your right. pocket. Uh, no time to play. Mm-hmm. I was like, but I'm animating, and, so, and uh, she just say whatever. That's so funny. Yeah. So I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> like uh well they, uh, not... yeah, they had no idea yeah uh, yeah not idea at all and since i was uh, a nobody people were like uh, yeah uh, it's just a guy drawing on a free uh, nintendo thing uh, whatever yeah, that's mm-hmm. cool but mm-hmm. that's it <laughs> the first year was really hard 
because like I have no knowledge at all in art. So when uh, you had to take like a big uh, paper, uh, like uh, in French we call this format raisin. You see what is it? It's like a big canvas, like a, a sheet of paper. Probably like 20 inches, like I would say 20 inches by like 15 inches or something. Yeah, it's really big. Yeah, that's it. Mm. So me uh, drawing on half A4 uh, format most of the time, I was like, oh, wow, that's really big. And when you consider like uh, your DSI is only 200 pixels yeah. on 150 pixels, like what, five centimeters, five centimeter to on uh, <laughs> seven. Yeah. You're like, uh, now you have to draw on something that is like uh, 20 inches or 22 yeah. <laughs> so i was like well that's a bit huge yeah. but let's go <laughs> and uh, i was just everyone like uh, i have not and even the teachers were like but you never draw on a format this big i was like no i, I did not even know a paper will, could be this big <laughs> so, so man teachers were a bit concerned like who are you <laughs> are you living in the cave or <laughs> <laughs> and then uh <laughs> No, but uh, wow, that was uh, really rough. Like, uh, <laughs> but at the same time, so I was laughing because I was so naive. Like, uh, I knew nothing, but I, I was there to learn. So yeah. For everyone who's listening, Emile Code in France is notorious as a school to be extremely harsh on its students. Like, they have extremely high expectations yeah. out of their <laughs> students, and it's like the first <clears throat> years are very like f like foundations for art so it's like it's like life drawing still life color theory but the teachers mm -hmm. are like yeah. notorious for being very um tough on their students yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's it yeah so the first year was really uh, tough <laughs> yeah <laughs> like uh, what i'm sure. doing there so but i tried my best and uh, the the first trimester was like wow what the hell is happening and then the true others were fine so i went up to the next year so i was like yay i did it <laughs> i'm not that bad <laughs> cool so my parents were happy too and uh, my family was really happy and proud and then uh the second year um it's when we have animation classes mm. so i was like oh, now it's time to shine yes <laughs> <laughs> like, this is like, it uh, Yes, <laughs> about time I can shine. Yes, <laughs> I was like, oh, gosh, finally. And then um, when I animated the first uh, class, like it was so good. And uh, the teacher was already impressed, like, wow, but uh, you had like class before? I was like, no. But uh, in my mind, I was smiling so hard, like, yeah, you see, oh, I'm scared. No, I was not like this, but like, it just. <laughs> yeah, you're just like patting your 3DS in your pocket. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, no, but uh, I was just so happy to be to do something I know I'm good at because, like, uh, I was really into animation and I was waiting for this, those class so hard. So when it happened, I was just so 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 happy. But sadly, those class animation class was the few you had in a year compared to others because right. um, Emigre is not really a school for uh, animation. Or I mean. You have animation class, but compared to still life, yeah. comic, uh, paint, and all, it's few. You really have to wait uh, more years to specific and go to um, animation classes. So I was like, oh, I have to wait. Right. <laughs> I have to pay a lot to do what I want. Uh, it's five years, right? From what I remember, like yeah. the total thing. Yeah, that's it. And the first year is kind of like, yeah, it's just like theory, like foundation. And then you have a little bit of animation and then you that's can it. branch out. You can choose between like illustration, yeah. animation and comics, I think. Exactly. Right? That's it. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. And then you finally manage to go into the animation branch after like, how many years does it take <laughs> for you to be able to, to... Go to the animation section? Yeah, to specialize in animation in the school. But the thing is that I didn't went there. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I did the three for the the three no the four first years because since I had preparation, it's one year before the three years, so right. I made four years, and then you have two other years to specific. Uh, and uh, like uh, as you said, you had to go on like comic or animation or um, uh, what illustration else? Uh, comic or illustration for kids and all, mm -hmm. but. 
uh, it cost money and i was like no uh, four years is enough mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah i can't go anymore sorry <laughs> so and uh, i mean the last year was really where uh, people see the potential of my art because i made a tumblr oh yeah back um, in second year it's it's when i just skyrocketed i mean like when i made my pigeon it was 2000 and wow. uh, 14 mm -hmm. or 2015 and it's really literally where french cancan and all those stuff just explode right. exploded online so now many people knew about me knew about my art and many even teachers that said stop drawing they're like oh i love your stuff uh, it's very funny so i was really glad and oh my there. god <laughs> Man, what revenge. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And even one teacher was like, uh, but I remember you didn't like what I did. Before. Oh my and they were like, what? No, what? I never say this. Like, Don't, you serious? Wow. <laughs> I remember you said this. You said like, uh, stop drawing. I said, no, no, I never said that. Oh my God. <gasps> I had to. The flip-flopping, oh my God. Love what you said. But, uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah and uh, finally you were someone <laughs> no, <I swear>. yeah <laughs> but i have a good memory <laughs> you went viral yeah now that you're viral everyone loves you yeah oh, God. yeah and even some some people when i went to viral they were, they were like angry or not angry but jealous at me and some people oh, hated me just because on twitter and tumblr and really i had uh, like uh, many likes and all and they're like oh do you do it and i'm like but i don't know it's people that like i don't force them to right 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 like uh, on my you just stuff. made things people but yeah. uh, many people were like wow i don't understand and stuff yeah and uh but many of my friends were like uh, i was gonna ask you do you feel like you got more like people that were jealous of you in real life or online um i think it was more online mm. but uh, real life it was not really jersey but just the way some people said yeah you're just famous because you make something original that nobody does so of course people will like it mm. you 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 feel like it's passive aggressive you know right like, oh, yeah. yep, yep. <laughs> i was like uh, okay cool but well uh, uh. <laughs> i don't uh, i just like uh, animating on the pds since uh, before i know you so yeah it's not for fame. I did this just because I love it. But uh, most people didn't understand. So I was right. like, oh, whatever. <laughs> but um, really, I was not, even right now, being with you and before, when I was, before going to art school, when I just discovered uh, Flipknot, mm -hmm. I would never think I would be famous once in, in my life. Like, mm -hmm. uh, for me, it was just optional. Like, uh, no, uh, I just do my fun and that's it and mm. i will just be the guy that comments on famous artists but i will never be recognized for what i do mm -hmm. and uh, it's true that uh, on flipnot flipnot times i was a bit famous on the website because of my animations right. mm. but when uh, the website closed i was like well fame will yeah, die yeah. with <laughs> so yeah. yeah what uh, i should do maybe i will stop and many people were like no don't stop like maybe make a uh, make a, I don't know, a Tumblr or a, um, a Twitter and stuff. I was like, but do you think it will work? Because online uh, people really like when you make big digital art with mm -hmm. tons of colors and it's so limited with Flipnet. I don't think people will like it. Like, uh, pff, I don't really know. And people, uh, all my friends were like, yes, do it because uh, if I don't do it, people will lose contact with me and they oh, right. will be sad. So I was like, okay, I will try. And thanks to my friends, I didn't stop. But if they didn't tell me uh, to continue, uh, you will never know who I am right now. Like, uh, I will just be a guy. Uh, <laughs> maybe, uh... You have some really good friends. That makes yeah. me so happy. Like, yeah, uh, yes, I really thank them. Yeah. Oh, that's... Yeah, like, uh, for example, for real, they saved my life because I was like, uh, I would even maybe stop drawing. Like, for real, I really, really wanted maybe to just... Uh, Yes, wow. go for maybe science or stuff. Or... Those are good friends, man. <laughs> yeah. That's so great. Oh my gosh, this makes me so happy. Because for me, I loved to draw, but uh, yeah. But art school also helped me because like, um, if I didn't went to art school, uh, I met some amazing friends uh, in Emil Cole. So hi to me if they are watching the stream, <laughs> the podcast now. But uh, yeah, they really gave me hopes too because it was it's really special for me as an artist 
because I did it so uh, how to say this so yolo <laughs> no, <laughs> sure because uh, many people like uh, generally when you want to be an artist I don't know you have to have a tablet or you have some skills of knowledge of colors or like uh, perspective and stuff and me I was just like oh, I have to draw my Nintendo DS I will see where it leads me you know like uh, yolo yeah. 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 I like hey. this and uh, <laughs> so, so that's when people were like uh, use what you got <laughs> i love that attitude though i think like i think w i love that attitude that you have because it shows in your drawings that you're having fun and this is what is so great about yeah. your drawings and your animations is that it's you're always we can tell you're always having fun and it's so yeah. positive and so sweet yeah well it's really something i had always uh, on me i mean uh, even my friends before i became like uh, really viral and buzzing i was exactly the same you know and uh, when i began to be famous uh, people were like don't change don't change please don't be like uh, those famous people that uh, became like uh, really close and uh, just me 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 and uh, it opened the if i become like this uh, slap my face because i don't <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to be like the rude and just uh, talk about my heart and uh, just oh I'm famous look I'm famous for nobody else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think people famous people does this but they just always wanted me like uh, don't become like this and all so I was like no no I won't <laughs> and uh, I think that's why I'm so easy going with my art and stuff because I never really want I never wanted to be famous you know right so sure. now that it happens I'm like it's a bonus, but like, uh, yeah, cool. Uh, I don't really know what else to do. So right. I just keep making my pigeons. <laughs> and just keep them making online. pigeons. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. People and, love uh, it. I will talk about how uh, pigeons came also, because I think a question yeah. is uh, about my inspiration. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. But uh, really, I never wanted to be famous, really. I just wanted to have fun and draw. So for people who are listening and uh, wants to have some like uh, how to say no knowledge about like uh, how to like what you do and stuff really just be inspired but uh, like um, remember what you do uh, what you like like what you love to draw but even not to draw but what you like in real life like for example uh, i don't know i love nature i love animals i love reading I love being, uh, I love culture mm. a lot, like uh, knowing about language, uh, countries, and uh, all of those made me like to represent it in art. Because uh, what I often tell my friends who wants to do art is like, you always have two steps. Like the first step is you like what you do, mm -hmm. right. you enjoy what you do. And then the second step is people like what you sure. do. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first step is always more important than the second one because, for example, if you don't like what you do, the first step, mm. even if people like what you do, if you yourself, you don't like it, yeah, it's not good because you're like, yeah, I do it for people, but that's it. Yeah, like, that's, uh, all right. that's very good advice. What? Like, uh, yeah, that's not really the full experience, you know? I mean, when you grow up, people uh, artists uh, will understand i mean when you are young you're like yeah i draw it's cool but when you grow up you realize that sometimes you you can't always draw what you want mm. but well if it's your job you have to do it because me. uh but it's still important to realize that it's uh, you have to like what you do right that also uh, when i tell people don't really mind too much the likes online yeah like uh sure it's great when you see that you make an art and you have like thousands of likes of course uh, even for myself i won't like that i won't lie that uh, when i have a lot of likes uh, i won't say oh my god dong i have so many likes like <laughs> too many uh, likes it's tiring to have so many likes. <laughs> <laughs> i won't say <laughs> i don't see people really i really i never seen anyone online saying oh i have too much like yeah. please people stop liking my stuff like for real stop liking my art <laughs> <laughs> like for real <laughs> or if someone say this online link me this because uh, it must yeah. be funny to say but i mean uh, yeah like um, when you have lots of likes it's uh helps to have confidence but also if you don't have lot of likes it's fine even if people don't like it it's okay because 
we are not made to like everything. Yeah. Like uh, even myself, I don't like everything I see, but I respect and appreciate the art of someone. So it's not because you don't like a subject that you have to insult someone. Right. Don't do that. It's not cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's not good to do this. But um, then try to also experiment and draw things that can also reach others. Because if you really just draw for yourself, it can be a bit sad in the end. Right. <laughs> if nobody really like what you do and you just close yourself. Because as an artist, it's really a huge community. So drawing with people or sharing with others is a bit needed right so for the the best experience yeah so yeah but uh, really the first step as i said really uh, love what you do yeah that's really what was for for me now and uh, i really thank people for liking what i do and uh, i hope i will never stop yeah (laughs) i hope not yeah i was gonna ask you i was wondering like after you went to Emil Kohl after you went to school. What was it yes. like for you? Did you? Because I know you worked with Bobby Prod, right, for Classic. Yes. And uh, did you also do other kind of projects? How is animation kind of tied to your your career, like the the different projects that you've done professionally? Yeah. So. After school, uh, yeah, it was like uh, I, re- I went back uh, because uh, since the school was at Le- Lyon, I went back to my town, so it's Annemasse, mm-hmm. so it's uh, near Geneva. And uh, there uh, I could uh, work with friends, uh, like we made uh, fanzines, mm-hmm. so, uh, little books, and uh, I made really illustrations and stuff. But um, I didn't have animations uh, jobs for now because... Uh, After school, I was a third, so it was like uh, I took time for myself to just think of what I should do now. Mm -hmm. And uh, since I stopped the school, because um, I stopped the school at the the art school, I didn't went to the master. I went to the um, the thing before, I forgot the name. Bachelor, maybe? Yes, bachelor, Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, I went to the bachelor. So my friends, uh, my teacher said, uh, it's okay if you stop before the master, because seeing my level, uh, I should be fine. Mm-hmm. And um, so I, I uh, mostly focused on my blogs and uh, I made little works with my friends uh, or stuff uh, around my town, like uh, painting on walls or mm. um, giving uh, like uh, little classes to kids or uh, oh, that's so sweet. to little, uh, a little art school with uh, where I live. Mm-hmm. So to focus on uh, teaching uh, kids about art because my town is really small or it's not too big. Mm. So most you don't really have tons of artists there. It's not like Paris or Lyon or mm-hmm. like Grenoble, big towns. Mm. Like, there it's really limited. So I was like, uh, I want to stay there a bit just to teach arts mm. when I can, because that's cool. And uh, then uh, I seen that I could have many opp- opportunities to in Paris to... Mm go to work and stuff but uh, I didn't feel ready so I was waiting a bit Mm -hmm. because uh, I was like uh, I'm not that good with tablets Mm -hmm. Uh, like uh, to work on big bigger screen and stuff and I didn't really have like a Cintiq so I was like uh, (gasps) no no I will fail I have to train so I trained uh, a lot before going to a studio, yeah. but I seen uh, many yeah people uh, being interested for me to work with them. So I was like, uh, that's cool, really. Uh, I, I appreciate them uh, to be interested, mm. but I was uh, myself a bit scared. Like, uh, am I going good to do to do good? Uh, I seen what people do in the industry. I was a bit scared because I was like, I hope I can do as good as them and stuff. Mm. And that's when uh, I had the opportunity with uh, Bobby Prod for a classic. And uh, mm. that was the first experience. But when I seen that they wanted me to work on my DS, my free DS, I was like, oh my, oh my God, is it real? Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> like, uh, I don't think it's real. Like they really want me to work on it. Like uh, it's, it's original, but uh, oh. uh, nobody did this before. Like, uh, right. They, they have a big trust. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I hope I won't fail, but I was really proud they uh, they asked me this. And so it was uh, my first experience in 
animation studio uh, to animate. So, but I have some knowledge about it. But I have many friends that work in the industry, so they already told me. Uh, Oh, that's nice. A bit how it would be uh, to work. So yeah, but uh, that's why I, I was a bit scared because I was like, I'm a really good animator, but I animate mostly on the DS. So <laughs> I don't know if <laughs> industry will ever be interested in this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a bit like uh, I shot, uh, I took again and shot on my feet. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, it gave me some handicap uh, before going to the animation. Oh. But um, at the same time, uh, people said um, I, they recognize my work so much that uh, it's not really bad if I just do my fun online and try to make uh, like uh, some money, but you know, like uh, YouTube and stuff. Mm -hmm. and I was like, uh, yes, it's cool, but working is better. And, uh, mm. You know, you have, uh, you experience things with people, you have a team, you meet friends, you make contacts. So that's cool. Mm. Do you, um, maybe not now with like the pandemic, but did you spend most of your time working, like teaching classes? For now or before or now with uh, yeah, like, the pandemic? I guess like before and also like now, like what is it like for you? Uh, before, uh, yeah, before I did this, uh, now it's a bit harder because like uh, <laughs> pandemic, mm -hmm. but uh, now what I do is I animate for myself, but I, I try to put more on how to say on YouTube because mm. I discovered or I discovered I'm a, a verified mm. or I oh. have a little thing next to my name. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh, nice. Uh, because it's a friend that tell me, uh, but you can be verified maybe uh, because you have tons of followers. Mm -hmm. Because I use I use YouTube like every day, but I use it exactly like when I was nobody, mm -hmm. or, like, mm -hmm. uh, when I had maybe one follower. So I don't even check my number of followers for real. Like uh, it's always my friends that tell me, "Don't KK, uh, did you see that one of your video has like eight million oh views?" Oh my god! I'm like, <laughs> okay, you just haven't even noticed. Like, <laughs> and they they put me a number. I'd like, yeah, uh, like what the, f <laughs> like what eight billion? What? That's really funny. No, but, uh, I think the one with eight million is like uh, the the broken one when I made the world. The pants that mm -hmm. is uh, yelling because the pants is too expensive. <laughs> like, but what the hell? Eight million? Where where did this number came from? Like, and when uh, I, I checked the other videos I made, many have millions, like uh, three crazy. millions, four millions. I like, don't what? Yeah, but I didn't realize for real. I think I realized this uh, last summer or uh, last uh, two 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 um, two thousand eighty uh, of uh, twenty. Uh, maybe March or something like this. And I was like, but wow, uh, <laughs> okay, nice. I don't know what to say <laughs> because uh, I was not prepared for such number. For all, I was like, maybe it will be one, 100,000, you know, or maybe 50,000 or 500 or I, I don't know, but millions, I was not really at all. So when I see this number, my friends were like, but you should monetize yeah, your video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was like, uh, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> because I know uh, it's free money and stuff monetized. And I was like, yes, I was like, uh, I see uh, all those famous people say monetize, but like, uh, what is this? How it works? Like, uh, I, I suck at the, those things online. I don't want to, <laughs> to be lost. And all. So my friend explained to me uh, how to monetize and I was lost, of course. <laughs> And then uh, <laughs> another friend explained to me, I was still lost, but less. And I was like, so what I do is like, I share a video and uh, depending on the number and comments and likes, uh, I have money of it. Yeah. Like I have to put advertisements. So they were like, yeah, the more the video uh, have likes and have advertisements, the more you uh, make money. And I was like, my videos last uh, like 10 seconds. <laughs> Like uh, where yeah. I put the ad, <laughs> because <laughs> when I see people putting ads on their videos, you know, their videos are like 20 minutes, so you can put like eight ads and I'm like my videos last five seconds. Like uh, yeah, <laughs> the, ad, the ads are longer the than ads the video. Like three times the length of my, okay, for real, I can't make a living with YouTube. <laughs>
<laughs> it was so funny. So I wish my friends were like, yes, uh, I don't know what to say. Maybe he put lots of uh, animations together. Maybe, I don't know. That's just YouTube, though. <laughs> Even YouTube. <laughs> so my YouTube was a total mess as well. I mean, now I was so used to be an artist, a YOLO artist. Even my YouTube, I was like, I don't even know how to do the, you know, many uh, YouTubers are like, if you like my content, yeah. subscribe, like, and I was like, but why I should ask this to people? Like, if you don't like my content, uh, of course you won't like it. <laughs> why I have to say this to <laughs> I never understood. <laughs> I don't know if it's a code or YouTube stuff, but I was like, of course they will like your stuff. Like, you don't have to ask them every single time on your videos. And then <laughs> my friends were like, but you know, it's YouTube things and stuff. But every time I see uh, like a YouTuber say, hey, if you like it, uh, please subscribe. Yeah, you gotta. Uh, and I was like, but I know, don't you tell me this every time. Yeah. <laughs> I want to unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it the first time around. You don't have to tell me every time. Yeah. <laughs> So and uh, yeah, that's why uh, when people uh, see my YouTube videos and they're like, oh, but you don't ask your um, followers to subscribe, <laughs> like, but why I should ask them? <laughs> why I should ask this? Because like, uh, it's like you go to a shop and uh, people say, hey, is, if you like this apple, buy it. Like, uh, so yeah, I know I have to buy the apple because I need to eat, so I don't need you to tell me what to do. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird culture for sure. <laughs> for me, it seems so strange yeah but i mean yeah but i don't um like uh, if people does this um i don't uh, mock you like it's good to do it i, I guess it's a code or youtube stuff yeah. just for me if you like the content of someone you don't need to say this but i guess it's important to say this you never know and apparently people follow only you tell them to follow maybe yeah so. it like puts the idea in their head so sometimes we do it at the end of every episode and i'm always feel weird about it but it's like I think people just yeah. won't think to sometimes. They just won't realize mm -hmm. they should. And uh, so it just helps. Yeah. I think it just depends also. Yeah. Like, it's just... I feel like now, like you said, KK, it's also part of the culture. It almost like kind of... It, yeah. It's almost like, you know, like, yeah, you're just doing it because do you want to... It almost kind of makes it more legit, you know, as in, as if in like... Yeah. And I think that's why it's good that you don't do it because you like it kind of makes it more real, you know, like it's almost like a little yeah. bit more like, yeah, I just did this like for fun and I don't need you to subscribe because I'm doing it for fun. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's more yeah. genuine for sure. Also, I'm te I'm so like terrible to promote myself. <laughs> you don't need to. I don't think you need to is the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't do it. That's why I don't do it because I'm terrible. I'm like I can't, I, I feel... When I try to promote myself, you, you can feel like it's not like I'm lying to you, but you feel it's not natural. Like, yeah. hey, if you like my work, uh, give me money. Give me... You know, I can do it. I know some people do it so naturally, you know, you don't feel awkward or um, doing it. And yeah, wow. it feels so good and natural. But when I do it, it feels so fake, you know, yeah. like I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'm begging people like, please. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, my name is Kevin. Like, uh, <laughs> I like to draw. Uh, I don't know. Uh, give me money. Yeah, no, like it's terrible. Like uh, nobody wants to do to give money to someone talking like this. I guess so. <laughs> that's why I, I gave up on uh, even my Patreon. Like I have a Patreon, mm -hmm. and many people are like, "But you have Patreon, but you never promoted." But I don't know. Like I don't want to at each post say, "Hey." I have Patreon, give me money, you know, like uh, I feel like uh, being rude always asking people to do this. And it's not true at all because people want to support artists, so I should do it. But my brain is always like, no, but uh, okay, for real, like uh, you won't tell people give me money every single day. Like uh, for real, get a life. <laughs> <laughs> it's my brain doing this. But uh, at the same time, uh, my baby is like, uh, uh, you need to eat, so uh, you move and uh, you ask. Yeah. Or I'm going to try. <laughs> I think your art just speaks for itself oh, yeah. a lot, so you don't need to. I was going to ask, kind of talked a little bit also about your influences when you were talking about Kirby and everything. I guess like like yeah. one of your biggest influence would probably be when you joined like the little flip note club, I guess, because you saw all the other art. But do you have also other influences like i guess you mentioned nature and culture so yeah i have tons so i i 
I made a, uh, a little list, so <laughs> I will tell you. Oh boy! Uh, everything. <laughs> uh, list. Many, most of my influences. Well, it's not a big. It's not a really big list, but. Uh, I just like that you made a list. As a kid, like uh, I think, yeah, <laughs> because I have so many in mind, but I really wanted to say the one that really, really uh, made me go to art. So of course, Kirby right. by Masahiro Sakurai, but. Uh, I think Kirby really was the kind of character that made me like it because it's really simple design, you know? It's not something too difficult, too complex. Yeah. Like uh, just a ball with eyes. And, oh yeah, uh, just a ball, a pink ball. That's it. So after I discovered like the Mr. Man. Oh I yeah. Guess maybe you know what yeah, it yeah. is. By uh, Roger Hargrave. So Mr. Man, I just loved this. In French, we call them mm. uh, Monsieur, Madame. Oh yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, like you have Mr. Angry, Miss Smile, uh, Miss Sunshine, and so. and I loved those because because um, it was really like uh, you had tons of characters with tons of emotions and their shape are uh, explaining the emotions uh, they have, and uh, I really loved to discover uh, of a character. And the books were so cute too. Yeah, I had so many of those books. So I love to read it, and I was like, wow, I love this style. It's, it's really simple. I, I love it. That's how I discovered also The Moomins mm, by uh, Tove Johnson. Mm. So Moomins. I think uh, someone said that I should draw one. Yeah, there was a, there was a, a prompt. I think it was Moomin and Snufkin ice skating. Yeah, I will do it. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, uh, Moomins, I loved it. Like uh, when I see the, I discovered the anime, the animation before the books. And the, the animation, wow, yeah. great, amazing. And the design and stuff, I was like, wow, dumb, I love it. You also had, I don't remember the name in English, but in French, it's Barba Papa. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you know. Uh, I think it's Babar the Elephant, right? No, it's another no? one. Yeah, it's a French IP. You yeah. know what? Let me. Yeah, it's a French. Right? Yeah. Let me pull it up. It's really funny. It's very popular in France. Yeah, I've never heard of that. Yeah. <laughs> but most of my inspiration, I'm sure nobody heard of most. <laughs> I will, but it's cool because I mean, like, I like to make people discover stuff yes. because I have to admit, like, uh, popular culture online is true that uh, many people search for stuff to there see. There is. Because, uh, we often, yes, that's it, yes. <laughs> So yeah, that's the bar. Dong, I loved this so much. Yeah, you, you you definitely you definitely like the simpler character designs. Like a lot of the stuff you mentioned, it's always just yeah. like a shape, basically. That's it. Yeah, but I like complex stuff too. But I think uh, simple shapes really is what made me go to art. Yeah. So like, uh, but uh, talking about uh, complex stuff because it was the next uh, inspiration I got. It was like. Uh, um, René Goscinny and Albert Uderzo mm -hmm. that made uh, Asterix. Mm -hmm. Oh, so Asterix! Yeah, Asterix yeah, yeah, yeah. was really like my uh, was really my uh, childhood with the comics. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, yeah, I really love uh, Asterix a lot. Mm -hmm. You also had uh, like uh, Titus. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, by Zep. But I think uh, the uh, what is the name? Uh, in English, because it's not Titoff. Let me look it up. Uh, in English, uh, the Titoff, it's not Titoff. Yeah, I forgot the name in English. I, I wonder too, because I'm like really wondering. Yeah, I don't know what that is. It, too tough. What? <laughs> That's it? That's so funny. So, well, Known sometimes as wow. too tough in English. Okay. Oh. It's, a, it's a very, it's an extremely popular mm -hmm. comic in, in France. Titoff is like, it's, I think it's like, yeah. One of the most popular kids comic, right? He's really good, Zep. Yeah, I think yeah, because it was really, it was really famous because it was talking about stuff that generally you don't talk in comic because it was really sexual oh. stuff. But uh, in the eyes of a kid, you know, so it's not like it was. Uh, for example, I mean, if you're a kid and you read this book, it won't be like uh, you watch porn, you know, yeah. like uh, it was made for kids. To understand sexual life, it's like um, you have a sexual class in school to understand how to make babies or how uh, to have a relationship with someone. And uh, people really loved uh, this comic because it was really um, behind its own time in a kind of way. Like, uh, for example, when I was reading this as a kid, I was like, I never thought I would find something like this in a comic like uh, mm. <laughs> it was uh, so well done like uh, I was like surprised you know and uh, the story was really huh. interesting and it's also something 
as a team, you can leave those situations too. So I guess uh, people really loved it because they could live also this in real life. So that's how it became really yeah. famous. I've never heard of this, but it kind of looking at it now, it reminds me of like Big Mouth on Netflix. I feel like maybe that's the closest thing. I guess it would be, except that TTF is more like, see, yeah. it's for it's really for kids. So, I mean, as okay. an adult, you can still laugh. It's like, it's not that yeah. it's like, to, it's not like toilet humor, but it's just like a lot of the yeah. jokes are kind of like, it's it's almost as if it was like an H E manga, but like Don gotcha. for like, Fr- like yeah. French Belgian kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a movie apparently in election. It looks yeah. really good. Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's a really big IP. It's a really big mm. IP. Yeah, yeah. There was a movie. Wow, I've never heard of it. That's crazy. I mean, I guess, yeah, it's yeah. just uh, never came to America. <laughs> yeah, I think it's because also culturally, I don't know, yeah. like, it would have to go, like, it would have to go through, like, the American, I don't know, mm. oh, culture right. processor. Now, to for it to be uh, given to americans i think (laughs) yeah but well better later than never yeah sure (laughs) we still have a lot of questions and a lot of them i think would be uh really cool to answer yeah yeah there was a section we had a few question uh questions about productivity yeah and sort of how you uh how you animate so fast and so one of them was from at margot l uh or margot uh, asked, I'd ask, yes. how are you so damn cute? But that may not be appropriate. Uh, instead, I'm going to ask, it seems that you're <laughs> super good and fast at animating. My brain can't wrap around it. How do you do it? Take care. <laughs> so that's a good question. I just uh, watch what I'm doing, uh, drawing, and I see that uh, I'm so uh, <laughs> terrible. Like <laughs> I try to make uh, shapes, mm-hmm. but I can do it right. So uh, to draw fast, it's I guess it's really like, the more you use to do something, the more you are faster at it. Because, for example, when I really began to animate stuff on Flipknot, I was l- really slow, but not too slow because, like, the the what I drew at the at the time was pretty easy. Like, it was just little shapes, and uh, it was not big, big, hard animations. You know, like uh, I began discovering uh, Flipknot back in two thousand and nine. And I think I really did big animations around maybe 2011, you know, so two years later. Mm. So, but in the meantime, I still could draw several things that I liked. So some mini fan arts. I didn't really have my own characters back then. So I mostly talked to people and they were like, uh, what should we draw? Like something we like, like food or stuff. The more you have the pen in hand, the more you um, you are good to um, draw what you want to draw uh, pretty fast, you know. So, for example, uh, I was really terrible to draw circles, like uh, just a circle. I, uh, I could not draw it one well. Uh, every time I failed to do one good, and the more I draw circles on uh, Flipknot, because you don't have a circle option to make it, right. so you had to do it uh, with your hand. The, the more I began, I became good at it, and the more uh, I could make them faster and faster and faster. Sure. And uh, it's also how I could uh, train of uh, animating my ideas because uh, I just uh, when I had an idea, I have no uh, how to say knowledge about um, like storyboarding, model sheet or stuff. So <clears throat> every time I had to animate a story, I did it straight forward. So I didn't have any like uh, storyboard. Yeah. I didn't have any Plan. Uh, section stuff. Mm. So it was really like, uh, whoa, YOLO once again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the more I did like this through, uh, the more I could uh, go faster mm. in a way because uh, I did it so many times that I was used to do it this way. Also, it's, uh, a, a skill I got from Flipnuts because um, for those who don't know it not well, um, yeah, I wanted to talk about it. Uh, I think it will reply to a question. When you draw on uh, flip not, you it's not like uh, any other um, illustration program. Like, uh, for example, I take um, Photoshop or um, Krita or uh, Pen to Slide. Uh, when you have uh, layers, you can make um, as many as many layers. As you want, like you can make one for sketch, one for lines, one for colors, etc. Et mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
But when you um, have Flipknot, you have only two layers. Nice. Or on the Nintendo DS, you have only two layers, not more. So that means that, for example, if I want to have one layer for the lines and one layer for the sketch, that's it. Mm -hmm. You have nothing else. Yeah. So I let you imagine that uh, if you want to make an animation with only two layers, it's just hell. <laughs> but yeah. since I had nothing to animate, I learned this way. And I never add most uh, layers to animate. So that's why when I animate something, I go straight forward. Mm. It means that uh, I don't even do a sketch. Mm. I don't even skip pose. Um, it's just like exactly like uh, our draw right now uh, on the canvas now. It's just I make the lines. And uh, somehow it always ends good or the way I like. So if it's not good, I just delete the lines and I redraw them. But I never draw from sketch. Mm. I always do the lines uh, directly. Even in a, uh, anime um, illustrations, when I illustrate, I never do uh, sketches. <laughs> oh, I should do. I should do it because, like, uh, it's a bonus to do. Honestly, I think that's really good, though. I feel like uh, a lot of the artists that I know who are very proficient, like that, are like very fast draw like you draw they don't do yeah. a lot of sketches yeah. they just go all straight ahead and they just do the line yeah because then you can be because once you the more you do yeah. this the better you get at getting the line right right off the bat exactly mm -hmm. yeah that's it exactly yeah do you feel do you feel like because flip note screen is so small it kind of made it kind of helped you gain confidence yeah because uh yeah that's it i think yeah because it's small but also like even if it's really small, what you do on it, it's mostly you focus on that mm. because you animate it. So small or big, you know, uh, as long as it's animated, it's good. But for me, when I have to draw something that is fixed, right. like a, an illustration, so it's not moving, the fact that it's on a big canvas or thing, it scares me because I'm like, so much details and uh, it's not moving so if i miss one detail uh, it will ruin all of my illustration right so i'm i i have a lot of fears but uh, when it's um, animated i'm like okay it moves so even if something is looking wrong it moves so it's alive so it's fine so another question like regarding this is like from barack zero one two six two two three four yeah. how long did you take to get good at animation yeah. and from at flippy super to you what is the best way to do multiple animated contents in a short amount of time i think those are all related i think kind of like what the takeaway from these questions yeah. would be how much time do you spend drawing and animating a day which is unlike on average also, to give you an idea, for example, I began to animate on the 3DS when uh, Flipknot Studio 3D came out. It was uh, 2016, it was March uh, mm -hmm. 31, 31st, 2016. And until today, on my 3DS, uh, since now 3DS gives you the amount of time you use um, a game, mm. I have around 4,300 uh, something hours. Wow. So I have more than uh, 4,000 hours in uh, four years. So 4,000 hours? 400,000 hours? Yeah. Uh, I, I, will, I will write it. Yes, it's 4,000 uh, something like this. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> 4,300. Something. Nice. Yeah, 4,400 uh, hours on my 3DS. So Jesus. I let you imagine, like, yeah. <laughs> but I love it. I can't stop. <laughs> Let's divide it by 24. I'm like, I'm curious now how many days of entire drawing that is. That's almost, so that's a hundred and... It's like two months. That's 180. So that's like as if you never stop drawing for the like for half a year basically like you didn't sleep you didn't eat you didn't do oh, anything else but drawing for half a year yeah, you didn't sleep until yeah <laughs> so yeah <laughs> you can imagine and uh, this is the time for the 3ds but if you imagine the time from my dsi it was i was uh, when uh, it was more than uh, 
12,000. Uh, oh my it God. Was something wow. Like I love these numbers because this is the best way to show like this is the amount of time that yes. we need to get good at drawing. That's true. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's great. So yeah. So now, yeah. So when people say me, oh, I, uh, what, oh, I'm good to animate. Well, the, I uh, animated and uh, did my stuff for the equivalent of 16,040 hours. <laughs> Oh yeah, so I drew, so I animated, uh, I animated all of those hours, and that's all I'm good. Yeah, that's a really <laughs> great answer. So that's why I said people. I love that. Oh, they say that like you need like ten thousand hours to become really good at something, and so you've gone very far past that, and that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> I have like a question. I think is really interesting from yes. at Silver Fushin. I would love to know if the themes of LGBT yes. representation in some of your work come from a personal place or if you are simply trying to put positivity into the world. On that note, how do you continue to make such positive Q content in such an increasingly negative world? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it was a it's really important, uh, interesting question. And it was mostly with my friends because uh, I have Many of my friends that are part of the, the LGBT mm -hmm. community, mm -hmm. community, and uh, it's true that uh, when I talk to them, or even generally with people, I'm like, but um, do you have that much movies or stuff or cartoons that represent you? Like, right. uh, do you have many things that represent you at all, like uh, for real? And uh, it's true that, uh, wow, you, you don't have much. I mean, when you compare all the stuffs coming out all the productions, the series, the tunes, the songs, the movies, the representation of LGBT stuff is just so few. It's like in existence, you know, even when you put some on cartoons, you have to be cheesy. Like maybe you don't say people, uh, the characters are LGBT plus. You just put them and the, the, the public have to guess if it is or not. Right. And I found this really weird and it was like, don't for real, it's just like people like anybody else. Why they don't have much representation? But when I discovered thanks to Twitter, as always, mm -hmm. or even Tumblr, that some people think that when you say you're gay or B or stuff, you you speak politic. Oh, yeah. like, the first time I, I seen this online, I was like, I'm not talking about your president, I just say he's gay, so I don't understand. Right. <laughs> but it's maybe because because I'm French, so um, when people always said oh, LGBT is politic, I was like, but I don't understand what they say. Yeah. <laughs> it's not politic at all. Just gender or sexual, um, gender attraction stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like I'm talking about Barack Obama. <laughs> yeah. <What the hell>? <laughs> so, <laughs> for, no, but for real, I was so lost. I was like, <laughs> and I seen always people saying this. So I was like, I have to make my own searching online to understand. Mm. And uh, <laughs> I even when I search online, I still didn't understand. So I was like, okay, uh, well, let's ba let's go back to Twitter. But uh, I will see what people think. And the problem is that uh, so many people or many countries forbid uh, for yeah forbid about talking about. This subject. Oh, I see. So, uh, right. if you make, for example, a show with LGBTQ plus characters, you know that this show won't go, for example, in China, yeah. King, yeah, yeah, or yeah. in uh, Arabia and stuff. So you can lose some some um, audience, yeah. and audience now is really. I mean, it's what make a show works or not. Mm -hmm. So many money and uh, studios fear this a bit. But I'm like at the same time, uh, if the story is really well made and uh, interesting, people, it's not that they won't care uh, the characters are LGBTQ+, but like if it's so well made, people will be interested about this subject and they will want to know more about it. Mm. So it, it should be important to do it, but just do it good. Uh, and uh, that's what many people complain sometimes about. It's like when you see shows with LGBTQ plus characters, it's the, the characters are so stereotype mm. 
Like, uh, for example, if you do a gay guy, you have to wear a pink shirt mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. have a lot of money. Even. And I'm like, sure, it can, be, it can be this, but like, you know, that you have guys that are really manly and uh, they play rugby and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> or like, uh, it's not like uh, a definition of like, if you're lesbian, you have to be a girl with short hair. Right. Like, no, you know that uh, you can make a character that is a princess, really girly. And she she's just attracted to other princess, like right. You could make a show so good like this, but people have so much stereotypes. Yeah. And uh, also since it's uh, something you don't really learn at school, like uh, yeah. for example, uh, or you learn at school stuff, but like for real, like uh, most people when you talk to them about LGBT stuff, most people are like, yeah, I know about gay, be lesbian, and that's it. Yeah. Mm. You know, like uh, when you you say pansexual, they're like what? When you say like uh, asexual, like, they're like what? Yeah. Or uh, they, they, it's because uh, they they were not educated about it, so they don't even want to know more about it. And I think like mm. it's really sad because, for example, when you have a friend and they say to you like yes, they are pansexual, and most of other friends are like, uh, okay. <laughs> let's move on you know <laughs> because they, they, they can't even talk about it because they don't have any knowledge so i'm like if we could just make shows but um a show like okay we talk a bit about this but it's not like as people say putting the information down their throat <laughs> like uh, only talking about it all the time but just a, a little knowledge is never uh too too much for people because we love to be in and stuff right and uh I mean, when people are really interested in, like, for example, cosmic or stars or stuff in the sky, and and uh, many people are like, but we we won't see a stars in real life, or like uh, you, we see stars in the sky, but like we just have the sun, but we won't see the sky, uh, we won't see like uh, aliens and stuff. But people are really interested in aliens, even if we don't even know if it exists, you know. <laughs> so. Why uh, they would not be interested in LGBTQ stuff, and it's something that exists. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, uh, at some point, uh, yeah, that's really a question I ask myself, and it's just that people want to be well represented. And uh, the thing is that online, it's cool because you can share whatever you want. <laughs> so many people in the LGBT community, or even people not part, but uh, are. Um, how do they say this? Allies? Allies? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Allies. Yeah. Um, allies. Oh, sorry, I'm with my action. <laughs> <laughs> allies. Um, allies. <laughs> like me. That That's really cool. Like, uh, for real, like, I feel represented. And if you do it in a way that is interesting, it will make other people being interested in this. People like to feel represented, but in a way that feels well done well made right because uh if you do it like the stereotypes it's like you you are mocking them right they they, they don't really uh, it's really a lack of respect mm. and uh, most of the stuff you see sometimes on show it's just mockery and uh, it's really like to say oh look it's just a small community okay we make fun of them well whatever what they are going to do to do there are nothing, and <laughs> I really like uh, this mindset, especially when it comes to adults, you know, right. people who make shows or stuff. They say they say it so blatantly, uh, like, don't have some have some respect. Like, mm -hmm. we don't ask we don't ask that much, and uh, that's why I was like, okay, uh, <laughs> if no more, if nobody does it, I will do it myself. But I, of course, many people does it, but. In the animation way. Yeah, there isn't that much. Yeah, I don't see it much that, yes, sure, you can make um, LGBT stuff, but uh, you you can make more than just two guys or two girls kissing, you know, or holding hands. You can really make a story, a background of a character. You can also make more uh, like uh, representations. Uh, like what when I try to animate those times and I should make more because uh, <laughs> it's been a while since I did I have to do more I know people are writing but <laughs> it's just uh, writing because I write I write a lot with my friends my friends 
helps me a lot when it comes to the writing because it's something you you can do it too fast you know you have to know to have some knowledge of uh, the community right and uh, how to animate things good to not offend people or not make things that uh, could be badly interpreted so i really take my time to make something cool and fun and uh, funny with humor uh, but also to educate yes yeah. uh, to educate people about the subjects that they have no knowledge the best way to educate people about something they don't know is to make them interested about it and uh, well as an artist well <laughs> we have all the response to do it so it's just now a matter of how you have to do it and um, right it's really cool that many artists does it in a way like yes we want to do it but sometimes uh, many does it like it's too much we don't realize it because we want people to know about it so much mm. that we do it in a way that is really like uh, as they say uh, it's like you really want to put the information down their throat and it's not really the best way so i think you should just talk about it animate or illustrate it but also in a way that makes people think okay yeah but lgbt uh, cute people but like uh, it goes farther than just this you know like right. you really can go deeper like uh, really on the character design the character development right you, you can really build big stories with it and uh, i think this is really what people want and of course we would like a show to come in on tv mm -hmm. at least once mm -hmm. <laughs> in uh, like uh, i don't know how many years it happens but just like the main characters for example are gay or some on um, some stuff but like a big story like uh, when you see animes and stuff but, like just something so damn good and you're like gosh that's lgbt but like for real uh, like like you, i want more like you would be like um the uh, lgbt aspect yeah. of the show is kind of like not the centerpiece of the show it's like they just happen to be lgbt and the show is like about like this big story arc yeah yeah like uh, yeah like uh, even if it's uh, not really the big aspect of the show you know that it have uh, it uh, it's talked about it um, free openly right like uh, yes uh, you can see the characters like holding hands mm -hmm. sometimes i don't know if they are together you feel they are part of the lgbt community maybe other friends of them are there but the main story is maybe i don't know like uh, the character wants to be an artist Uh, the character met someone that is in the school. Mm. The character, the main character, is not at school because he's poor. And uh, the other character is like, "Hey, if you help me uh, to go there, maybe uh, I will be a good artist or something." So the story is really around the art, but the character are just just happened to be gay, you know. Right. But it's not like a big deal. Like uh, every three two seconds, you're like, "Oh, they are gay. Yeah. You have to make them do something gay." Right, right, right. right. Like, uh, no, like. Uh, you don't have to always do this just let them be normal because it's just they are attracted to guys but that that's it yeah like you don't have to do a big deal like uh, every sense making them do their things <laughs> because it's uh, what uh, even people in the lgbt community when they see this it's make backwards because you're like do people just see us big as this you know like uh, yeah <laughs> we have to hold hands all the time yeah like uh, no it's more than this even when you see stories with uh, non-lgbt things we are so used also so you can see any stories sometimes you don't have an apple of stories or stuff on the show because we are so used to it we don't need to put it all the time but if one day you had like an lgbt show it would be good to just make the characters be themselves yes and just uh, you you advance with them and you follow their stories and not just their love stories or their love interest or how they feel and stuff sure you can talk about those subjects yeah but it has to be linked to the character and the story yeah 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 so it's important to have a real story about it so that's what people want and for real you can do a show like this because it's it's, it's a story like any others but It just you have tons of people that are just closed minded and it won't happen because you have uh, tons of stuff like budget and money and audience and if 
someone just see the word LGBT, there will be formed and like, oh no, not this stuff. And they're that, just sad. You like, uh, give it a try at least. You don't know what it is. Maybe it will be good. Yeah. But people, uh, yeah, that's really, it's culture. It's part of the culture, sadly. Oh, I mean, I'm glad because when I made the animations, I was really scared at first because I was like, oh my God, many people may, may might I hate me mm -hmm. because just I made a gay story. And many people were like, oh no, KK, you did this. I'm disappointed. And I was like, but no, for real, like, uh, it's just characters. Yeah. You know? Really? Wow. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. Many people are like, oh no, I have to unfollow. Like, oh, well then whatever. Okay, good, uh, bye. Fuck those people. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was like, well, uh, it's all right if you want to go. I want to uh, hold your hand, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's stupid to, it's a bit to just uh, unfollow someone you like just because they talk about agility. Yeah. Plus artists, like uh, I could make something worse or something terrible, but this yeah. is something to educate people. So for real, no, like, whatever. Fuck, fuck those it's people. not, uh, but many people were like, uh, okay, okay, you don't uh, lose anything. I was like, yeah, it's true. Yeah. So, wow. yeah. But it's true that when you realize people saying this to you, it's, it's still, you feel, you understand what is happening because when people say this online, you, all, you realize like it's just online, so okay. But you tell yourself that those people are, exist yeah. in real life too. So if they get angry at you just because you say a character is gay, you're like, wow. Uh, imagine if you make a show that goes on Netflix, the number of people like this who will comment and say things like, yeah. you're like, but don't, uh, do you even want to understand the story behind? They, they are just blind. They, they just will uh, criticize your choice. So that's why it's really hard. And people got frustrated by it, the LGBTQ plus people, because they're like, they just want representation, but they, they got some sort. So they do it in a way that is sometimes not the best way like we they really want to push it push it push it hard and it it scares people even more because for example when online i don't know uh, like uh, you ask people is uh, being pound and be pansexual and be is the same mm. it, it's just a question because people don't know mm -hmm. and sometimes they <laughs> don't get inserted but you are people who are like but oh my god you don't know about it uh, Oh, but educate yourself and like, but no, but it's not their fault if they don't know about it because it's something you don't learn at school. So yeah. be chill people and tell them what it is. Mm -hmm. But uh, even LGBTQ people lose their temper sometimes because it's just that people, <laughs> most people online don't know anything about it. So they are like, we have to educate yourself. And uh, <laughs> yeah, when you think about it this way, you are like, uh, it's a never ending battle. So it will just be good if uh, big shows online or even on TV could just openly talk about it. Yeah. Mm. But like, it's a big deal, but not like just uh, exaggerating the fact, like, look at this show because we have gay characters and B characters. And like, it could be good to promote like this, but I think it's too much. Like, uh, just say it's a new show. You discover it, you get uh, attracted to the characters, you want to know more, you love the show. And when it ends, you're like, wow, that was crazy good. Like, I want more. I hope they will a second season. And people, it will, uh, it's all movements comes. That's, that's also kind of how, I don't know, that's, I feel like that's kind of like how I got introduced to the LGBTQ like like ideas mm. were through <clears throat> card capture Sakura because there's like representation in the, uh, in yeah. the manga and it's kind of like yeah. it's not a big part of the story but just like having these characters I was like I don't know there's a thing for me where it, it was just like wow like oh we can do that like there was like almost like a thing like oh this is something that that yeah. can actually happen like I don't know like I feel like it's true that when you're in this yeah. world where the only examples you get are like the Disney movies and it's like the prince and the princess. And then it's like, yeah. oh, that's the only way. And then when you finally have <laughs> another representation, it's like, oh, that's great. I can do something. But like, there are other options. Yeah, so I do think also representation is very important. 
Yeah, but sometimes you have good representation, some stuff, but like you, nobody talks about it. Yeah. Or it's not that nobody talks about it, but it's like nobody just heard of it. Because I remember when I was in art school, I seen a page on a comic and it was two guys that uh, were in a tent and uh, one said uh, he wanted to go to space. And then the guy was a space boy and the stuff. And I was like, uh, I don't even remember the, the title of the story of uh, the comic, mm. but it was uh, a, pa uh, a, a many pages that were just talking about LGBT and saying like, but how do I feel, how I put myself in the society because I don't have much representation. All the songs I, I listen about love is always a guy and a girl. Mm. Everything I see on TV is a guy, a girl. And when I see this, I was like, wow, but damn, that, that's cool. But like, <laughs> why is it just, 10 pages in a roundup comic that nobody ever heard about, you know? And uh, I, I, feel, yeah. I think it's, it's just sad because I know that many people want to do this, but it's never really shared online. Like, uh, for example, uh, in France, well, when I see, like, uh, oh, I forgot to say some of my inspiration, but, but well, it's, it, it's okay. But for example, in France, we have an, ad, an advertising on TV. Mm. So it's totally random advertising about, uh, I think uh, it's when you buy uh, an house and you have to put stuff on your house, like a fridge or, uh, I don't know, uh, a table and stuff. And the advertising is just like, oh, Julie and Harian are together and uh, in their apartment and they need more to put uh, stuff on their uh, on their apartment. So you just happen to see a, co a couple of lesbians uh, putting stuff in their apartment and you are like, Okay, like uh, it's totally fine, and uh, nobody really minds the advertisement because it was it could be no anybody, you know, like uh, it could be right. young couples or just one guy or two. But there, it's just like gay people or LGBT and people were totally fine with it. So I'm like, I don't know if it's just few countries or friends. I know French, uh, we are really open with this subject, mm. so we don't mind at all. But it's true that. I would never see an advertisement like this, maybe in America, like uh, it sounds hard to uh, put an, uh, just uh, an advertisement, even if it's really random, but just uh, Julia and uh, Anne uh, have uh, like uh, a breakfast and stuff. <laughs> because uh, I feel like uh, maybe it would be too much. And uh, when I see some parents saying like, oh, you show this to our kids, mm. oh, how dare you? And, Whoa, oh my god, it's uh, <laughs> if they are so closed minded, I think it's really, it's really sad. Like, uh, for real, like, uh, even me as a kid, I, I would see this, so it would not kill myself. Like, uh, I see, I see so many how other things on news, like uh, when you you put like the things happening in wars, uh, like uh, guns, uh, stuff, and you will tell me that just two guys kissing will scare me. Like, uh, for real, people uh, <laughs> stop your. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I swear, like uh, adults, when they, are, they say this, I'm like, no, for real, just just put the news to your kids, you you will see, uh, yeah. they will be scared to news uh, than uh, two girls kissing, for real, stop your bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like the news are like so much crazier and crazier every, as time yeah. goes on, it just gets like, <laughs> it's just like, yeah, the world is yeah. a crazy place. Um, but I'm glad that you're out here yeah. putting out positivity through your animation and then like spreading joy and love. And oh, yes, I try. Yeah, 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 yeah. even in <laughs> those crazy times. No, people appreciate it for sure. It's really good to have it out there. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I guess because even myself, I'm kind of tired, but I, I keep going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So so you feel it oh, too, yeah. the burn from like the negativity <laughs> of like the news and like the internet. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my god. Especially on Twitter. I, yeah. I try to connect a bit less on Twitter. I mean I love Twitter and stuff, but sometimes it's just too much because you see sometimes too much negativity. But, well now that uh, all the president stuff is done, you're like, oh I can do yeah, it. Yeah. And sure. then yeah. you have a new Thing coming and you're like oh come on yeah it's never ending <laughs> it never ends yeah yeah so well <laughs> what do you guys think of wrapping it up yeah is there anything that you yeah. want to plug kk or like i guess like i guess everybody <gasps> if you have like a patreon yeah plug your patreon 
Plug your Patreon. Ah, yes, I have to, ah, yes, I have to promote. I have to promote myself. Yes. I think I do the less good. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna make you promote yourself. Okay, I will try to promote myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you like my work, please share, talk about it, comment, <laughs> like. <laughs> no, <I don't. laughs> so uh, I will just put the name of my Patreon if I can write it properly. So um, <laughs> yeah, uh, on my Patreon, uh, I have. Uh, some so if people are interested in uh, animations what is good is that i put uh, many tutorials about patreon there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they are free so they are free i mean they're not uh, behind the wall, a paywall so if you just want to check it feel free to check uh, you think it's free mostly but if you want to give some money it really helps especially those times mm. because uh, <laughs> i had an opportunity to go to america but i can so i work at house but i still try to bah, make more money i mean everybody tries to do this so yeah <laughs> So uh, I don't say no if I can have some support, <laughs> but uh, it really helps me because um, especially, <laughs> especially um, my friend and I, uh, we had, um, we found a cat and um, it was a, a cat uh, we found uh, outside, but uh, I think maybe the old master treated them not so good. Okay. And now we help the cat to be better. And I use some of my money to buy some food and stuff. So I don't want to say to people, please give me money for a cat. But uh, <laughs> I mean, it really helps me. Uh, it would helps me and my friends to take care of because I love animals and I'm really against animal abuse. So um, if you want to give some money for my work, animations and illustrations, and uh and help the cat support me and support kk <laughs> yeah support the cats <laughs> yes so it's uh true in one you know? yeah support <laughs> kk and the cat everyone through patreon go check it out so yeah please <laughs> <laughs> but well, but if uh just if i can say a last thing for people um a last important thing is really to believe in yourself uh never really stop to draw but Taking poses is really important, especially uh, with internet culture. Don't feel like uh, when you don't share online, it's a um, loss of time. Amen to that. Well, great. Yeah, well, I think that's good, good words of wisdom. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's the end of this creative block. Thanks to KK for being our guest and sharing his story. Well, thanks to you for inviting me. And thanks for your listeners. I hope that what I said will help the next future artists in the future. And... Uh, if some of them can draw on Flipnote, I would be really happy because sometimes I feel alone. So please. Oh, please use Flipnote. Please use Flipnote and connect with KK. Follow Creative Block on Twitter. It's at Creative Block, C R T V Block, where we ask for drawing prompts and questions to ask your guests. Huge thanks to my sister Clemens for editing the podcast. And please subscribe to the channel if you love our content. I've been your host, Gene. And I was B. Keep being creative, and we'll see you next week. And please subscribe to KK's Patreon. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.